NASA announced last month that the Advanced Composite Solar Cell System had finally deployed the 860 square foot 30 by 30 solar cell for the first time since its launch back in April of this year. The ACS-3 is orbiting the Earth at about twice the height of the International Space Station and makes full rotation around the Earth roughly every 105 minutes. Now, normally I wouldn't bother trying to photograph such a small object that's orbiting at such a high altitude, but as it turns out, the solar cell is made of a highly reflective material and can be almost as bright as Sirius, the brightest star in our night sky which makes this an easy object for naked eye viewing from most locations and you don't need a fancy telescope or binoculars to see this one. I've been searching the sky for it every night for the last week and finally got a good glimpse of it last night and even managed to take a photo of it with my iPhone. Do you see it? <laughs> there it is. It's not the best photo but it's proof that I could do better. I'll have two opportunities tonight to try to capture the ACS-3 but first I want to go over how I plan tonight's shoot and talk about camera settings and lens options and why I chose them. The easiest way to track the ACS-3 is with the free NASA app. It shows viewing times for your location, what path it's going to take through the night sky, and how high it will be above the horizon. First you're going to open the NASA app and scroll down till you see missions and select Advanced Composite Solar Cell System. Next, you're going to click the Sightings tab on the lower left. Here you will see a list of all the future passes from your location, and you can also access the different viewing maps to help with timing and viewing of the ACS-3. Today's first pass will begin at 8.44 p.m. and last roughly 9 minutes. The ACS-3 will rise above the horizon in the east-southeast sky, and will reach maximum height of 24 degrees above the horizon in the eastern sky a couple minutes later. And then it'll set in the north-northeast sky. The second pass should be rising here in the southern sky and will go almost directly overhead and end up in the north-northwestern sky. Before it gets too dark, while I still have a little bit of light, I wanna talk about the three cameras and lenses I'm gonna be shooting with tonight. First up, we have the Sony A7 Mark III. This one has a 16 to 35 millimeter lens on it. I'm gonna be shooting it really wide at 16 millimeters. This will be running a time lapse. Next up, we have the Sony A7R Mark III. This one will be shooting with a 7200 on it. I'm thinking I might be able to get a cool video clip or maybe even a photo of it zoomed in. And lastly, I have the Sony A7S uh, Mark I. This is actually the original Sony A7S. I don't really plan on shooting too much with this tonight. I'll probably just move it back behind the other cameras and try to get a good behind the scenes shot of me shooting tonight once it gets a little bit too dark for the GoPro or for my cell phone to really capture what I'm doing. It's almost go time. All right, it should be, oh, there it is. I see it. Wow, look at that. I was only able to get this quick video clip of the ACS-3 on its first pass tonight. NASA's app predicted a full 9 minute pass, but it only poked out of the wildfire smoke for about 30 seconds. I'm not really sure why the ACS-3 blinks like this. Maybe it's rotating, or maybe it's just from the smoky skies. I'm not really sure. Let's see if it does it in the second pass. I managed to get the solar cell with all three cameras on the second pass tonight. This first shot was from the A7S. I put a 15 millimeter lens on it with hopes of getting a good behind the scenes shot of me while I was filming the pass. And I was hoping to also get the ACS-3 in the shot, which I did. Next, we have the time-lapse camera that was facing to the southwest. Not only did it capture a great shot of the ACS-3 passing through the Milky Way, it also managed to capture multiple other objects in orbit. After spending some time in the Sky Guide app, I was able to identify the bright object that was trailing the ACS-3. It's actually part of a rocket that launched Cosmo 2219 into orbit back in 1994. And this is part of the rocket from Cosmo 1151. The 
other cool thing about the time-lapse frame is you can actually see the wildfire smoke moving around and pushing towards me. After I got the shot, I quickly turned the cameras to the northwest, where I filmed another video clip at about 200 millimeters. The time-lapse camera also caught a quick glimpse of it as it went behind some clouds to the north. All in all, I had a great night shooting the NASA solar cell, and I definitely look forward to trying to get a better shot of it soon. Let me know in the comments if you found this video entertaining or helpful for viewing the ACS-3. As always, thanks for watching till the end. Till next time, clear skies.